Reading. Sitting on the dock of the bay. Coming up in the next hour, your love song messages are at 10.15. 10 to the top will test your music knowledge at 10.30. And your work mishaps. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at 10 o'clock. This is Justine Green. The government is about to announce the biggest changes to gambling laws in nearly two decades. They want to update the regulations for the smartphone era, which has completely changed how people place bets. The proposals are understood to include a statutory levy on companies to pay for research and treatment of gambling addiction. James Grimes, who's a recovering addict and campaigner, says the sales techniques used by the industry need to be regulated. Free bets, VIP schemes, 20 emails and texts every day. It's like someone stalking you. And that is what we really want to stop. This predatory, incessant marketing that is really driving people to that point where they feel like they're trapped and they can't escape their addiction. And I can see so often why people get to that point where they don't feel like there's hope or help. The National Education Union says that while it regrets the disruption caused by today's teachers' strike in England, staff shortages are causing wider problems. It's the fourth walkout this year as part of a dispute about pay. The unions earlier rejected a 4.5% rise in wages. The Foreign Secretary James Cleverley says the time is now for British nationals who want to leave Sudan as it's unclear what will happen when a ceasefire in the country ends tonight. Evacuation flights are continuing from an airfield near the capital Khartoum. Our reporter Nick Garnett is at Larnaca Airport. I understand there'll be five flights in the next 24 hours arriving here in Cyprus to try and get as many out. Now that could mean another 700 people arriving here on top of those probably six or 700 that have already come out. It will still leave between 250 and 500 people that the government have identified who want to come out of Sudan at least still in the country. Sainsbury's says its profits fell by more than 5% last year, despite an increase in sales. The supermarket said that once one-off accounting charges had been taken into account, it made underlying profits of £690 million. It's blamed the fall on higher cost pressures and cutting prices to help shoppers. The UK's competition regulator has defended its decision to block Microsoft's takeover of a gaming company after the technology giant said it sent the wrong message to the industry. Microsoft had wanted to buy Activision Blizzard for more than £55 billion. The Competition and Markets Authority says the deal would have harmed innovation. The environmental campaigner Dame Jane Goodall has called protests by groups such as Just Stop Oil that disrupt people's everyday lives counterproductive. She said that the demonstration was pitting members of the public against campaigners trying to protect wildlife. Dame Jane told the BBC there were other ways to make a difference. I prefer what we do, which is roll up your sleeves, get your group together, take action, inspire others to join you and... Yes, raise money to help endangered species, volunteer, you know, but try to actually do something positive. And that's the BBC News. It's three minutes past ten. Gary Davis. Listen live on the BBC Sounds app. BBC Radio 2. Ooh, Gary Davis, ooh, Gary Davis, ooh, Gary Davis on your radio. 